I remember the first time I saw it, the first time I saw them, a dazzling cloud wildly twisting in a fluid choreography of funnels, ribbons, and teardrops in constant motion. How beautiful, how unlikely. I wondered how to make sense of it, to make sense of them, for they were birds, hundreds, no thousands in exquisite coordination. They were starlings. I wanted to see it again and again, but how? Starlings are common in Northern California where I live and it was only during the fall and winter months when I could find the huge migratory flocks. I began by searching dairies, feedlots, and agricultural areas, anywhere a starling might find a plentiful food supply. Needless to say, I did a lot of driving. I would find the starlings one day only to come back the next and find they had moved on, sometimes miles away. But none of this explained the extraordinary behavior I wanted to see. Then one day I saw it, the reason this was happening, they were under attack. And who was attacking them? The worst of all their enemies, a peregrine falcon. Attacks could happen any time from sunrise to sunset. Peregrines would attack the flocks to and from their roost sites and at their feeding grounds. The larger the starling flock, the more likely it would attract a peregrine and the more beautiful the show. When sensing an attack, starlings typically climb up into the sky and create a fluctuating cloud or ribbon. As a peregrine approaches, the flock compresses into a compacted black body of birds that makes it hard for the falcon to break apart. But some falcons are undeterred and barrel right through while others take a more cautious approach. I have seen some of these attacks go on for several minutes and over several miles. Starling behavior like this is seen all over the world and is known as a murmuration. It's interesting the term murmuration, because if you stood underneath, it would not be a murmur of wings, but a roar. At nearly the same time of year, millions of shorebirds like these Dunlins and Sanderlings migrate down the west coast of North America where they make stops to rest and feed. Stopovers on beaches create a beautiful backdrop of crashing waves and gorgeous sunsets, and this is where I like to spend most of my time. Their large numbers often attract peregrines, and like the starlings, they perform extraordinary flight displays when under attack. When sensing an incoming peregrine, the flock flushes and moves immediately over the crashing surf, engaging in highly synchronized evasive behavior, flying low in the troughs between breakers. At the same time, they rapidly change their flying positions, exposing their dark dorsal feathers, then their white underparts creating a flash-like effect. The combination of the crashing surf and the shorebird's evasive behavior creates problems for attacking peregrines.
There are a number of theories that try to explain these behaviors. Questions like, is there a leader? Do the birds navigate by watching seven of their neighbors? Or is there some sort of collective thinking or communication going on within the flock? The list is long. And is it not counterintuitive that the sight of a starling murmuration or the flashing of shorebird wings might attract a peregrine rather than provide a defense against one? There are times when I see similar flocking behavior, but never as dramatic as when a peregrine attacks. There's obviously a lot going on here, and I leave it up to the scientists to come up with the answers. For me, it's about the challenge and fun of anticipating the bird's behavior so I can be at the center of action and witness one of nature's most extraordinary events. Mm -hmm.